ethanol was once touted as the way forward in curbing carbon emissions from cars and ending the United States' dependence on foreign oil. It was such a successful argument that American lawmakers and administrations mandated corn ethanol be added to gasoline and then substantially subsidized its production. With corn ethanol subsidies scheduled to end later this year anyway, surprisingly, an ethanol manufacturing group says it agrees with the end of subsidies. President of Growth Energy Jim Nussel says consumers should be able to make a choice about what they put in their tanks without help from the government. And we knew that uh, the, with the budget deficits and the challenges that are happening in Washington, we wanted to transition our industry away from the government support and a blender's credit that frankly just goes to oil companies and, and put it toward consumers. We discovered that if you move more toward flex fuel vehicles and flex fuel pumps so that they can make the choice, we're in a much better situation than if the government is managing uh, the liquid fuel supply. The U.S. Congress mandated the use of renewable fuels, including ethanol, in 2005. In the United States, fuel may now contain as much as 15 percent ethanol, called E85, although most fueling stations still sell only a 10 percent ethanol blend. In Brazil, however, the second largest ethanol producing country, and by the way, the largest ethanol exporter, the blend is much higher, about 25 percent. NASA would like to see an even higher blend at U.S. fueling stations. Exactly what kind of blend of ethanol do they want? E15, we were able to break through that blend wall with EPA this year, so we hope that E15 will be available throughout. But some of the mid-level blends, like E30 as an example, is something that still gives the kind of power and octane, fuel mileage, et cetera, that, that many of our consumers want, and at the same time allows them to save price at the pump by putting in something that's cheaper and homegrown like ethanol as opposed to foreign oil uh, uh, such as gasoline. On its website, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency says the renewable fuel standard will help to significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions. But according to Kate McMahon of Friends of the Earth, the process of making ethanol can be more environmentally damaging than gasoline. You look at the environmental footprint of the way that we're producing corn in this country, it's not so grand. We basically have a large amount of uh, pesticides, fertilizers being used to produce uh, corn for corn ethanol. We have a lot of land being used to produce corn for corn ethanol. And that's causing ecosystem impacts, whether through the conversion of ecosystems or through the degradation that we're finding from those agricultural uh, practices that we use to produce corn. So it's actually not so hot. But McMahon says she's not necessarily against the use of biofuels per se. Of course we're not against biofuels. I mean, if you can do a biofuel in a way that is not bad for the environment, is not, you know, uh, causing uh, problems with food supplies or, or what have you, um, that, you know, it doesn't have, you know, uh, water pollution, all these other kind of things that we're seeing with the way that we're producing biofuels today, Okay, sounds good to me, but, I, but that's not what we see. One of the more serious charges against corn ethanol production is that it's responsible for rising food prices and, in some cases, food shortages around the world. A recent report from the UN Food and Agriculture Organization says maize export prices were up as much as 80 percent from the same time last year. But Growth Energy's Jim Nussel counters what he says are myths surrounding ethanol. On the issue of um, you know, pollution, part of the reason that ethanol is even here in the first place is because of the pollution that oil uh, and gasoline puts into the air. That's the whole reason that we are lessening uh, the, the environmental impact and the health effects uh, by putting something out there like ethanol as an oxygenate. So that's the second. This whole food versus fuel, you know, it's, it's interesting to me, it's obviously people who don't know anything about the ethanol process that make this argument because the, the process of creating ethanol creates two products. It creates ethanol, but it creates a high protein animal feed that is basically uh, now one third of the corn kernel that goes back in a higher protein, higher value feed than the corn kernel itself. Despite continued debate over its merits as an eco-friendly fuel source, Ethanol will likely continue to be an important part of the world's energy portfolio. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, worldwide ethanol use increased 350 percent in the past 10 years, reaching 74 billion liters in 2010. Rebecca Ward, VOA News.